Inspire Ed Virtual Learning Series. Welcome to Inspire Ed. As we continue to watch the COVID-19 pandemic evolve in Ohio, this school year looks different for everyone. And that is why Inspire Ed was created by the Ohio Department of Education's Office for Exceptional Children and Ocali. Each week, this virtual learning series brings you information and resources on a variety of topics to help support learning and successful outcomes for students. Whether you're an educator supporting students with disabilities, an administrator providing resources to educators, or a family member navigating your role during at-home learning, Inspire Ed is for you. The content of this webinar has been pre-recorded, but we want to encourage your participation. If you have any questions or comments, we invite you to be part of the discussion by using the chat feature. Questions will be answered throughout the webinar, and later, we'll be providing a link in the chat to a brief survey. By completing a survey, you'll be able to access a certificate verifying your attendance in this webinar. During this very unique time of learning, connecting and exchanging ideas is a key to inspiring success. Welcome, and thanks for joining us. Welcome to our Inspire Ed Virtual Learning Series by Ocali. We bring you today a delightful topic on why checklists, especially now when the world is upside down. And hi, I'm Heidi Orvash Kaminsky. I'm a consultant with State Support Team Region 7. I've been there six years, but I also had some experience as an administrator and a teacher. And um, I am really excited to be here to be talking about checklists because it's one of those tools that um, are so valuable to me in my regular everyday life. And hello, I'm Mike McCoy, a new member to SST 15 as an educational consultant. I am a uh, recovering superintendent with about 32 years in education as a teacher uh, and building administrator and superintendent. And I would like to share some of my experiences with uh, using checklists. And my name is Ron Rogers and I'm with Ocali. And some of the past things that I've done is just like the other two that's on here with you as presenters, you know, worked up through the teacher, then um, principal, director, uh, have not had the opportunity like Mike has to be a superintendent. That's probably one of the items I wanna skip. However, was with State Support Team Region 1 not long ago and now with Ocali. So yes, I, I really wanna share, you know, the way I use checklists also. I think it's going to be a, a fun adventure for all of us. And, uh, and you know, if you're driving in the car, one of the things that we'll be sure to do, we'll be sure to describe the slides. So that way you don't have to try to look at them while you're driving. Okay. Uh, our goals and objectives for today. Uh, the goal is to provide reasons to use checks with students and or adults. Objectives is number one, uh, participants will be able to explain the importance of checklists and participants will explore finished checklists. You know, Mike, it's kind of nice how you, you know, describe that goal and those objectives because we know as teachers, we really have to make those things really clear. We, we want them to be as clear as possible for our students. So we want them to be clear today for everyone. One of the things we're gonna do today is we wanna really connect our audience, you know, and our audience could be educators, could be some parents, families, or even students. And our hope is, is that, you know, the way we kind of talk back and forth among the three of us, that everybody will understand the language and understand the terms that we use and everything. And we really want you to engage with us for the next 30 minutes. So to do that, we would invite you you know, to always think about using Twitter, chat box, the chat box, or even Padlet. So one of the things that, you know, if you are gonna use Twitter, please feel free to uh, use the hashtag InspireEd or, um, and, and at, you can use Heidi's at Heidi or Vosh, or you can use Ron's at Ron B. Rogers. 
if you want to use Twitter, most people use the chat box. So that's probably what we'll count on you using. And you know what? Let's try it. Let's try the chat box real quick. Uh, please let us know in the chat box, are you alone or are you with others? For example, some people like to sit with their DLTs or their BLTs or even their teacher-based teams. Um, so, and some, some like to sit with their co-teachers or if you're a family, maybe you're sitting together with your mom or dad if you're a student or, uh, or grandma or grandpa. Just let us know in the chat box. And Ron, while they're putting that in the chat box, I also want to mention that we're all part of the UDL Collaborative, and that's uh, another great piece that we're all a part of, and we're glad that um, we can be here together. So I want to talk a little bit about the, um, the effect size of uh, checklists and the why, like why I use checklists, right? So for those of you that aren't familiar with the Hattie Research um, he's kind of the consumer reports of, you know, what works in education. And so you always want to pick strategies and that work um, above a 0.40 or more because that'll give you more than a one year's growth. So today we're going to be talking about checklists and checklists kind of fall in the advanced organizers and it has effect size of 0.61, which means that it has a large effect size. So it is something that we want to utilize and use in not only our daily lives, but in for sure in the classroom. So that slide, Heidi, as I'm looking at it, says Hattie Research effect size of advanced organizers, 0.61. And there's a beautiful like half circle. And in the red bottom, it says uh, uh, reverse effects. And then as it moves up to yellow, developmental effects. And then it looks like it point three, five, or teacher effects in orange, and then 0.04, clear down to 1.2 is the desired effects. And I noticed the 0.61 is in the desired effects. Such a cool graphic for everyone to kind of look at and a great way to show that barometer of influence. You know, if people are, are thinking about Hattie and they know something about Hattie's other research, feel free to make those comments, have that conversation in the chat box. Don't you think that, that would be fine, Heidi? Yep. So let's dig a little bit deeper into why checklists are important, right? So first of all, I know the main reason why I use them is to help me with organization, right? So they really help in self-monitoring and progress. And I even think of my calendar as a checklist that I have for the day, right? So um, they really help us to make sure that we get done all those things that we need to get done. Um, it also, uh, in learning, um, it helps reduce cognitive overload, right? So we have so much stuff sometimes that we're learning that if we have a little visual reminder, a checklist of these are the steps that we need to do. It really helps support that. And um, it also, when we think about um, use of checklists in the workplace, we're really helping develop that skill for use in the workplace, right? So many workplaces have checklists like this is how we prepare food and we have to follow this list. So it's just a great organizational tool and um, a great support. And now that we're in remote learning, um, a lot of families are getting checklists of how do I prepare for remote learning and things like that. So it supports a lot of different people and a lot of different reasons. And we would like for you to consider about what, I, what is your why of why you think checklists are important and to put it in the chat, please. So why folks are putting that in the chat, um, I just want to kind of hit a couple things on this slide while we're here and and then Mike can feel free to hit a couple things, too. Um, you know, I think about that help us to self-monitor. It reminds me of, you know, one of the UDL principles, you know, and, and how we create, you know, we just create an atmosphere of, of students being able to do things on their own, you know, and kind of do that self-monitoring and, and things, that expert learner, kind of things like that. Ron, I always found as, uh, as a teacher, uh, it's very important. I'm an old industrial arts teacher, um, and most of the learning uh, that that I provided to kids was project based. So it, it was very important to kids, uh, my students, to be able to have checklists to know what the desired effect was, of what, what the project the end result was, and then the steps to to get to that. Uh, as a building principle, basically on a bell schedule, uh, I use checklists to prioritize my day. 
And then as a superintendent of the district, um, it, it helped me checklist, helped me to prioritize a, um, and also to stay focused on those things that needed to be needed to be taken care of. And also things that didn't get done on my checklist for today could be moved to tomorrow and we could uh, prioritize those and, and get those done and focus on that. So as you're, as you're thinking about that, Mike, I've, I've, I guess as you're talking, I've got a question for you and other people, you know, can feel free to continue the chat in the chat box. But my question to you is if, if someone said, Mike, you're not allowed to do checklists anymore. Do you think you'd still get as much done every day? No, uh, I don't. I don't think I could remain focused. Uh, I mean, my checklist can be anything from a uh, from a post-it note to a sheet of notebook, paper, yeah, iPhone. Um, I mean, I, I use those all in my professional and personal life uh, just to stay focused on the task at hand. And to I, there again, prioritize those things that need to get done and those things that uh, they don't need to get done today, but they need to get done in the near future. So uh, it would be difficult for me to function as a school administrator uh, with without checklists. Wow. So um, before I ask Heidi a question, I just just I today I was talking to. Uh, Barb Gentilly Green, and I, she asked, you know, this afternoon, what am I doing? I said, well, at one o'clock, we're taping an Inspire Ed. So anyway, with that said, she was, te- I told her it was on checklists, and she said, Ron, she said, I used to do t- checklists on a tablet, you know, a big, long tablet, and then she said, you know what? She said, it didn't focus me enough, so she said, I started using the three-inch, uh, the three-inch squares post-it notes, but she said, I got to write in too many things on it, too. So she said, now what I do, and it works great. She said, I use those real little teeny post-it notes where I can only fit one little thing on it. She said, as soon as I'm done with it, I tear it off my, and I know Heidi's laughing because she knows that's how Barb does things. She says, I'll tear it down. I'll shred it up. I'll throw it away. And it's like, yes, that's one thing done. So uh, that, that that's how Barb does it. Heidi, any any thoughts? No, I, I have multiple checklists. Um, I, I'm one of those people that are paranoid. So I have a digital checklist and I have paper checklists. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. So like, and if there's like a to-do list that's really important, because sometimes I will leave it somewhere, I take a picture of it on my phone. So I have a backup checklist. So I'm, I have the emergency back <laughs> checklist as well. Wow. And it's funny sometimes how we get organized with checklists. My my start of the checklist for the next day occurs during the evening when I'm writing things down in my calendar that I did do and then moving things forward to the next day that I need to do. And so it's a it's a constant uh, circle of uh, tasks that that need to be completed. Wow. Wow. So I'm going to, Heidi, do you want to go ahead and I'll pull up your Padlet and you can kind of discuss with everyone the Padlet? So one of the things that we created for your learning and ongoing learning for today is we created um, a Padlet. And so you can get to the Padlet by clicking on the link if you have a copy of the slides ahead of you, or you can use the QR code or it will also be placed in the chat. So you have multiple ways to access this Padlet. And so we kind of organize this Padlet. Um, one is an intro to us, so you can kind of, um, and then the second one, we're kind of showing you some examples of um, some checklists. And we also encourage you in the later column that if you have a really cool checklist that you want to share with us, please post it because we want this to be an ongoing um, a one-stop shop that you can for all things checklist. So if you see a creative checklist, hey, snap a picture and attach it to this Padlet because it'd be great for you to share any of those cool checklists that you have um, with us. And so one of the checklists on here that um, I placed is, um, I think Ron might be pulling it up, is um, looking at the, um, the standards, right, for workplace readiness. 
And it's kind of like could be used as a checklist of what are some of the things that could be done in each area at each grade level of things that you can consider to help build students' um, workplace readiness skills. So that would be one example. Ron, do you want to share an example? One of the things that I would like to share, and of course you've got the Padlet, you can feel free to write in the Padlet. To write in the Padlet, you just click on you know one of the pluses and add whatever you'd like in whichever column you like. So with that said, I want to share the checklist example that I created for everybody. And it's as it pulls it up, feel free to share in the chat in the chat that uh, you know, maybe some checklists that and you've come up point, with. That's a great point, Ron. To add one, you just hit the little plus sign in the column that you want it in, and you can put it in by a link or a picture. Um, there's a variety of ways that you can add to this Padlet. So as, as you look at the screen, I'm sharing the checklist for online meetings, uh, continuously changing this, you know, all the time. It's a live document. So anyway, it's it's the Inspire Ed checklist. And for example, if you're going to meet online, it gives you some ideas of the prior to the day of the meeting checklist, on the day of the meeting kind of checklist. And on a side note, like during the meeting, some things that you might want to think about. And of course, that'll be included with all these different links you know, in the programming with the Inspire Ed. You'll be able to find these things real easily as a handout. And of course, really all you need is the link for the Padlet and you can get to everything also. Um, because it's universal design for learning, we like you to have different ways to get to things, just like you know, you can post and share in the background on Twitter right now, or you can use the chat box. And now you can even use the Padlet if you'd like. So with that said, um, Heidi, if you've got something to add, I'm going to switch this back so you're sharing our, our slides again. Or Mike, do you have anything to add before we go to the next slide? No, just that um, I, get, I guess thinking back through uh, uh, my, some of my my experiences with special special needs students, SWZ students, um, checklists are a great uh, a great uh, option or a tool for those for kids that maybe have some attention problems that keep focus, keep them on task, um, so that they know. Uh, that there is a sequence of operations. Uh, and so I, I, I found those uh, very, uh, very important for, for kids in the classroom. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Mike. And that kind of reminds me of something I wanted to share. And that was my son's 16 and he bought a Mustang, 2006 Mustang. It's a five speed. And, you know, when a person's learning to drive, there takes so much brain power to remember step by step what to do, especially in a manual, you know, where you're shifting and pushing the clutch and you got the brake and you got the gas pedal, you got all those different things going on, you know, so him and I, we created a checklist and at the beginning of the checklist, you know, I always, we, we put first walk around the car, kind of do a check, make sure the tires are up, make sure there's no dents or dings that are new, you know, then go ahead and get in the car, put your seatbelt on, you know, push in on the clutch, turn on the key. I mean, I'm not doing this in the exact order because you'd also check your mirrors, make sure nobody's around. But we put these on a checklist and it made it so much easier for him. Now, is the checklist going to last forever? No, the checklist is there until he doesn't need it anymore. It's a scaffold and it works really good. I want to bring that up because there might be students watching this presentation and we want them to feel like, Checklists aren't just for adults, it's also for students, especially for students when you're learning something new. So with that said, we're going to go to the next slide. That's a great example, Ron. And I want you to know that I did use your checklist today to prepare for this online. Made sure I closed all my tabs and turned off my computer. So thank you, Ron. So... <laughs> So you can go to the Padlet, and one of the checklists that I created for you today is um, looking at graduation plans and career readiness, and um, it's really to 
get um, families and students and the adults that are helping prepare to think about, um, you know, high school isn't something you just graduate from, right? It's something you graduate to. And so this checklist is just a nice Thing to get you started of, you know, which graduation pathway am I headed toward and what are some of the things that I need to consider and do ahead of time? Because now, um, even though it's, it is law that each child has a graduation plan, we also want to be very, we don't want to just it to be compliance, right? We want to talk about best practice and we really want some thought to go into which graduation pathway best fits my interests and my needs and preferences. So this is just a checklist to help us start thinking about what do I need to do. And um, I think that um, families will find it helpful. Administrators might find it helpful and students will find it helpful. So, and I'm open to feedback. This was just a, an attempt of, hey, what would a checklist example look like for graduation? And so please feel free to give me feedback. You can email me feedback and you can improve on this as well. But it was just an attempt of here are some things that you may or may not consider um, for graduation. So and feel free to give me feedback in the chat as well. Very nice. Uh, Mike, did you want to add anything or are you good? Uh, just there again, uh, especially in these times uh, where students are maybe in school, out of school, uh, in blended learning, uh, a checklist of their requirements not just seniors, but but all kids, especially in high school, that they have a checklist available um, that they know the sequence of things that they need to check off um, as they go through their educational, their their secondary career and and preparing for their post-secondary and adult life. All right. So please add and share your checklist with us. So that's that um, next column in the Padlet. And You'll notice that uh, we had added a couple other checklists for you to check out, but we really would like this to be a resource that everybody shares their examples of some checklists that we could be using. So we um, hope that you will add your checklists and um, to this Padlet. So as we as we think about everything that we've talked about today, um, Mike's going to cover the summary for us here and kind of summarize some of the things. Feel free in the chat, you know, to add whatever you'd like. Uh, and, you know, if you've got some questions for us or anything like that, you know, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll uh, we'll answer them in the chat. Well, just as a summary for today, uh, I think we've gone through some of the important aspects of checklists, how they can be important for adults in their professional career, but also for students um, in their educational learning and being able to prioritize um, and focus on the tasks at hand. Uh, i like to thank everybody for, uh, for participating in this. And as Heidi has said numerous times, um, post in the chat box, this is a living document. Um, that we can add to and make it more valuable to those who are uh, who are listening and and watching. Yeah, and there's also a great article in the in the why column too. If you um, want to take some time to read about why checklists are important, it, it is a has a nice little summary to it too. So, okay, well, you know what? With that said. Uh, wow, I think people should be pretty excited about checklists now, and they're leaving with uh, quite a few th different things. So uh, I think I'll take the opportunity to thank everyone here, and then uh, Heidi can and Mike can. So, you know, thanks so much for joining us on this Inspire Ed. Hopefully, you know, you'll look at our checklists and you'll start trying to use them, and maybe you'll even use sticky notes if the checklists don't work. But use something. You know, it's important, and it does take – uh, away from, you know, that immediate surge on brain power. Yeah, so I, too, would like to thank everyone for joining us for today and highly, highly encourage you to click on the Padlet and check out the resources and add to it. And please feel free to give me feedback on the graduation uh, plan checklist, too, because that is a uh, that is kind of a draft checklist and I'm hoping to improve on it and make it more powerful. So thank you for your feedback. 
And again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, there are some great resources uh, in the Padlet. Um, and uh, ask everybody to uh, take a look and enjoy and learn and uh, improve from it. Okay, for those of you that might be driving in a car, uh, one of the things we want to do is probably read this slide. And it says to contact us. Uh, we have Heidi Orvosh Kamensky. She's a consultant with State Support Team Region 7, and her email is H K A M E N S K I at N C O E S C dot org. Again, that's K H K A M E N S K I at N C O E S C dot org. We have Mike McCoy, State Support Team 15 Educational Consultant. His email is mmccoy at symbol sst15.org. Again, that's Mike McCoy, mmccoy at symbol sst15.org. And then the last one, which is me, Ron B. Rogers, the director of the UDL Center at Ocali. And my email is ron underscore rogers. R-O-G-E-R-S, no D, Ron underscore Rogers, the at symbol, Ocali.org, Ocali.org. So with that said, hopefully, you know, those of you driving didn't have to look at that slide. Thanks for participating in today's webinar. We've provided a link in the chat to a brief survey, and we'll also follow up by email with the same link and additional information about this series. This series is for you, and we welcome any feedback. By completing the survey, you'll be able to access a certificate verifying your attendance in this webinar. This recording and related resources will be available on demand through our website, ocali.org. There, you'll also find upcoming and past episodes of Inspire Ed. And you can keep the conversation going on social media. Find us at Ocali Official on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And by using the hashtag InspireEdOhio. As we move forward together in virtual learning, our connections help to inspire success. Inspire Ed, virtual learning series.